So good morning to you, welcome along to Eclipse Motorcycles again. Today we're out with this, we're riding the Lexmoto Michigan Cruiser. thing I do like about these Cruiser styles, it has those nice foot plates to rest your feet on. Just a quick look around the bike. LED indicators on this one. Nice big running daytime headlight and that nice main beam on that one. And then very, very easily and accessible to get into all the engine components on this. So a gorgeous looking little bike. Now the customer has gone for the alarm system on this and a lot of uh, people on the Lexmodo page are saying you cannot wire the Alarm 03, the Lextech alarm, into this bike. Let me just prove you wrong. On, off, panic sounder. And there's also the function on this to do the remote start. So one click and that bike does remote start as well. So we have found a way to actually hardwire it in. I'm going to turn that off now. So that bike does actually hardwire in using the Lextech 03 alarm. Um, took us about an hour and a half to do it. We had to completely go into the running loom on that. Key on this one just down the side. We're just going to arm the ignition up on this. Let it run its duty cycle and then we're going to fire up that engine. And there we go. No engine lights on at all gearbox on this goes neutral and then one two three four five on this one so that is your gear position all your indicators are all up the top in the other dials and it's a very very easy bike to actually get in and do so we're just going to, we're going to do now I'm also running two cameras on this now so we're going to arm this one up and you're also going to get the 360 degree view on this one so, so we'll, we'll do this video, video in video, video. So, so you'll get the main running video, video off the drift helmet cam, cam that I'm using but also I've got the 360 here and you've got a shot of the road as I'm riding so we're going to take this one up speed get some mileage on it and just uh, get this one running so I'm just going to sit back here let the traffic get out of the way wait for the lorry to shift himself and then we're going to get out on the road and do some riding mileage on this one. So just pulling out the junction. Now obviously this one is going out to a female rider. This is going out to Anna. Um, and obviously it was due out, to, it's actually going up today. Um, but due to obviously having to get into that wiring, we've had to delay the handover twice now. And she did phone us last night and say, is it possible I could have my bike today? And I did say to her that uh, it would all depend on if the senior technician, now diagnostics and electrical technician, could get the loom rewrapped and get all the panels back on by the end of the day. And obviously I haven't done my ride mileage due to the fact that the strip down and actually wiring of that alarm took up most of his time. And obviously that delayed my handovers on this. So we're just going to come in on the back brake first. And I'm just going to use that combined braking system just to pull me through the box. So nice bit of combined braking on that. Brakes on this are very, very effective. And I do love the way of these high-rise bars. If you're watching it on the 360 camera, the seat is a very, very upright, laid-back, cruiser-style seating position. The seat on this is lovely and comfortable, and it's got just that little bit of tuck-in just around the back of the back side, just to hold you on the seat. And the pedaling position on this is very, very nice as well. So uh, if you are taking two up on this, the pillion position on this is very, very nice. So, so we're going to take this out. We're going to put about 20 miles on the clock and hopefully I should be given a call around lunchtime to say, your bike is ready and you can come and collect it. So I think she's going to be a very overjoyed customer. Now obviously these Lextech alarms there is a way to actually wire it in, but you do require a diagnostic engineer or an electrical technician to do that job. It's not just a simple hug and play on these uh, bikes, like that you would get with the uh, the Titan scooters, where you've got a nine-pin block under the seat, alarm wire straight into it, straight onto the battery. Job done. With this, it does require a hard wire of the electrical circuits, like the strip of the loom, get into all those circuits solder connections, don't just twist and uh, seal them up, they're all solder connections, all heat shrink and electrically sealed up and then we re-wrap the loom on that, so obviously taking him a good hour and a half, I think around about hour and a half, two hours to do the loom on this one, but it is quite a long job to actually do the first 
wiring from this and obviously as you can see I'm sat at 40 I'm being overtaken by 125s at the moment but uh, road test mileage we test at 40 mile an hour and what we will be doing on a future video we've got another Michigan that's due to have an alarm we are going to do a full in-depth video to show you which wires and where that wires is on the loom but obviously it's a full panel tank off strip down to wire in these alarms so if you are thinking of putting a Lextech alarm on it make sure that uh, your test engineer or the place you take it to has an electrical test diagnostic engineer that knows all about vehicle wiring obviously uh, our chap in the garage is very very knowledgeable he's been in the business for years and years and years and he knows exactly what he is doing wiring up one of these bikes now as for the Michigan it's a big old fuel tank on this it's a hell of a fuel tank on this one don't actually know the capacity but we've uh, with for normally for test mileage as I say we put about eight and a half litres in a bike now I'm uh, nine kilometres in at the moment and I'm already flashing on two bars and it did have half so it's obviously levelled itself out on the tank so I'm, I'd say it's a good two two and a half gallon tank on this one but obviously check the figures on the Lex Mado page check out your tank size and uh, just quick check of those mirrors and a shoulder check behind me hence numpty coming up the inside of me that is the one thing we all say at junctions make sure you do your shoulder checks make sure you're aware of vehicles that are coming up from the behind which is why I constantly tend to be watching my mirrors especially on one of these little 125s obviously if I'm on my bigger bike then it tends to be head down and just get on with the job so we're just getting to the, uh, the test mileage on and I'm absolutely loving the riding position of this as well absolutely gorgeous little bike so we've got another one uh, in stock that's due to go out in the next couple of weeks these Michigans are selling very very fast obviously we did have the UM range that was available but obviously UMs now are completely discontinued we are not doing any more UMs we sold the last Vegas and the last Commando this week we still have a UM Sport so if you're interested in a UM Sport and you want one of those we've still got one of those available so obviously give the guys at Eclipse a call if you're interested in that UM Sport very very early looking uh, Harley Davidson effect on that one it does look like one of the, uh, the 1950s bikes and I do like it so obviously what we're going to do now we're going to come in hard clutch in and come in on the front brake and I'm now going to hit progressive braking and just pull it up on that front brake so you can just see the uh, braking performance of this machine but as I say, this bike handles absolutely superbly and with all Lex Motos, my favourite saying, it does what it says on the tin. I'm just working through the gearbox and then once again I'm just going to come in and a hard brake test on that front brake. Now these do have the combined braking um, we do have a, a guide that comes with it, a CBS bleeding guide, because you do find on some bikes that back brake is a little bit spongy and it does require bleeding out on all three nipples. So we start on the front, then we go to the front rear and then we go to the rear and sometimes it doesn't take very long to bleed them out. Some bikes we can be there for about 20-30 minutes just getting the air out of the system on this combined braking. But the combined braking is very, very effective at what it does. And the braking on these little Michigans is absolutely superb. So obviously the road dried out a little bit from my uh, ride test this morning when I got absolutely soaked. And my normal favourite thing down the dual carriage brake twice and then I shall get some mileage on the bike off camera as I say if I have an issue I tend to leave it in if I have no running issues at all I tend to uh, skip out and then come back in when we do the urban town route and we're looking at about 32k on this bike so currently 
very very easy to look down see my speed and see that I've got 11k on the bike and then just working out into traffic again and I'm just going to sit here a nice steady 42 wrap these miles up and obviously with these foot plates my feet are very very comfortable compared to as if you had foot pegs so very very comfortable seating position very very easy to manage and my favourite trick I now have no traffic behind me is to do uh, obviously I've done my brake test is a stability control which in case I just lift one hand off the bar I can just sort of sit it in my lap or sit my hand across my chest just for about 30 seconds and I would not uh, say to uh, normal riders to do this but obviously as an experienced rider I just want to check the stability and road holding of the bike even over bumps with just the one hand so there we go so very very stable bike and obviously riding a motorcycle you shouldn't be gripping at it like a lunatic you should be just holding nice and comfortably just a nice soft grip of those bars and I, what I tend to do is I tend to cover just the clutch lever with one finger there's a better riding position because obviously I can downshift and get some engine torque on quicker in an accident and I've also got a finger that is just off to my left, off to my right should I say, just covering that brake pedal. So should the worst occur, I've got clutch and brake under one finger and I can just lift the fingers and then just get to the other controls. But what I say at all times, just remember, if you are going to be making uh, gestures at cars, if someone's cut you up, try to use the head, because if you uh, have a car cut you up, for instance, on your carriageway, you go and give him that you're instantly taking away your power and you're also taking away your primary brake control so whatever you do don't go making uh, hands off the bar gestures just a shake of the head does the job and if you've seen some of my videos where I've actually been uh, carved up by cars and uh, had cars close to me I just tend to be uh, not an issue just cast it off as a numpty driver with an IQ of lower than 10. The only time that I tend to get uh, slightly irate and it tends to be on the big bike is phone users on their, their car users on their phones and that uh, tends to be a, a flea in the ear from me. So currently sitting about uh, 42 mile an hour running this bike in for Anna. So what we're going to do now we're going to edit out get another little bit more of the mileage down the dual carriageway the boring stuff and then i'll come back in uh, when we are back into the urban routes and we'll finish the video off there so i'll catch you guys in a while so we're just heading back off the dual carriageway now 28 kilometers in just a few more to do and the bike's ridden absolutely perfectly coming in on the rear brake this time obviously i have been uh, doing my brake checks at all the roundabouts and that combined braking system pulling up very very well so what we're going to do now is head in put it around a few roundabouts in town just try it out for obviously your town mileage as if you was riding normally if you're out on your uh, Saturday shopping trip and obviously 30k in seat is still very very comfortable I'm really enjoying this seat on this bike loving the uh, the high arm position obviously there's no ache off my shoulders with this riding position it's a lot more comfortable than uh, riding a sports bike or uh, a bar with uh, a, a bike with lower bars so it's michigan very very comfortable for long distances and they always say cruisers and tourists for long distances obviously with a sports bike you're going to be getting uh, aching wrists taking back sore knees But this little Michigan is just performing absolutely superbly. It's very easy to look down and see which gear I'm in. With that big, uh, nice shiny gear indicators all in front of me. So down to fourth, down to third, even sort of clutch in with no rev matching. It shifts through the box very, very nice. So a lovely smooth gearbox on this uh, Michigan. And it's the same with most of the Lexmodos. Once the uh, you've got used to that gearbox it is very very smooth to actually do anything and obviously the best bit about buying a new bike 
is that smell of the burning in of the exhaust, the smell of new paint being burnt off. Absolutely beautiful smell. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be uh, heading back to the garage, 29 on the clock at the moment. So by the time we get back it's going to be about 31, 32, which is going to be the 20 miles that we put in on the bike. And you can see in the car in front, that nice daytime running light is very, very bright on that car in front of me. If I just move around a bit so you can see, you'll probably be able to get this better on the 360 camera. But it is a very, very bright daytime running light on this one. All the controls very very easy to uh, manipulate as well so on the left hand controls you've got the horn to the bottom just above that you've got the indicators and then you've got the main beam dip beam and just to the right of the main beam dip beam we've now got a hazard switch so you do have hazard lights on this as well now on the left hand controls you've got your start button to the bottom obviously your running lights are on there and your daytime full daytime lights but obviously because it's a euro 4 bike doesn't make the slightest bit of difference and then just above that on the right hand controls you've got the kill switch all the standard place is very very easy to uh, know where you are on the controls and you can tell from just pushing it through these corners even though the tyres on this are quite thin on the front for a cruiser it does hold the road exceptionally well so I so said this one's going out to Anna and uh, I should be giving her a call when I get back to the garage to say this bike is absolutely perfect rides like a dream come and get your bike it's got the alarm on it so she's going to be a very happy customer I'll try and get this video up same day so obviously we're recording this on a Friday and I should probably get this up for Friday night so she can just obviously watch her bike but she will have collected it by then due to the delays in trying to get that alarm wired in and we will be doing a full video on fitting that Legstack alarm to any bike hardwired. So if you're struggling with uh, alarms on your bike, drop us a, um, a question in the comments below. As always, like, subscribe, smash the hell out of the notifications, tell your friends about it. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up. If you didn't, that's your choice. Um, we enjoy what we do. I enjoy what I do as well very much. And until the next time, guys, if you are riding, be well, be safe, ride well. Watch out for numpties in Aldis that decide to switch lanes right at the last minute. And that is what uh, watching for cars does for you. We're obviously leaving what we call a space cushion. But until the next time, as I said, be well, be safe, take care. And from RB, see you later on in the next video. And it's a goodbye from me.